What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we get to look at another gigantic creature. And I'm delighted, right? We've already looked at Deosilus. We've already looked at Niflkong. And yes, of course, we will... We, we will do a little comparison to those as we go through this video. But today we get to look at the Logos one. It's Ultra Gravitron. And I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I've been waiting for this. We knew we were getting a gigantic creature for Logos. We just hadn't seen it yet. And shout out to the lovely decks of Keyforge.com for providing the image. And I'll tell you what, genuine, genuine thing here. Decks of Keyforge.com phenomenal website they've got a card search option now to be fair you're they're also good for looking up decks you can buy decks etc but they have got a card search option and oh my goodness it's amazing it is actually perfect and when i'm doing my keyboard research which i do pretty gosh darn often it is my number one place to go go give those dudes some love it's a phenomenal website and i am all in favor of it so ultra gravitron then Oh, I love it. Now, quick side note here. Those two capture icons, they are enhancements have, have been brought in by other cards in the deck. They are not necessarily going to be on there. The likelihood is that they're not going to be on there. So what we see here is a 10 power creature with free armor, which instantly makes it the weakest of the gigantic creatures. We see Niflkong coming in as a 12 power creature and Deosilus coming in as a 20 power creature. Although the free armor is very high and to be fair, free armor is really good generally. So, okay, we can kind of forgive this, I suppose. Now, remember, you need to play both sides of the card at once in order for it to work. And when you play, you archive the top five cards of your deck. And I'm not sure how I feel about this. We'll get to this properly in a minute, but this could be a good or a bad thing. And then when you fight or reap, you discard a card from your archives. But if you do, you purge a creature and resolve each of its bonus icons as if you had played it. Now, this could actually be incredibly risky as well, because it does not say an enemy creature. It says a creature. So, of course, most of the time what you're going to do is you're going to be purging your opponent's creatures. But bear in mind, there is no may in here at all. If your opponent has no creatures in play and you fight or reap, you have to discard a card from your archives and then you have to purge a creature. Now, the good news is you do get to resolve each of its bonus icons. And the fact of the matter is, right, bonus icons are the thing in mass mutation. We've still got the amber bonuses we've always had, but then we've also got options for damage, for capturing, for drawing cards, etc. And you can get up to five of these on a card. That is the most that will physically fit onto a card. So there are going to be plenty of times you get to purge a creature and resolve two, three, maybe even four or five bonus icons. And that's kind of redonkulous. That does not necessarily mean that you are always going to be able to use multiples of these. But it absolutely does mean that there are going to be plenty of times you do get to use these things. And it's, it's going to be awesome, right? It is going to be awesome. Like, for instance, if you were to purge this Ultra Gravitron, you would capture two Amber, or one of your friendly creatures would capture two Amber. That's kind of ridiculous. So going back to the archiving then, you archive the top five cards of your deck. Now, usually what I would do is put some kind of reference in here to Eddie. Hey, you build up your archive and then it costs your opponent loads to forge a key, blah, blah, blah. But remember, you are discarding cards from your archive when you fight or reap, so maybe not so much. Now, archiving generally is awesome. Blind archiving, maybe not. You see, what happens with blind archiving is you get five random cards in your archive. Now, you can look at your archive, and at the beginning of your turn, you have a choice to either take all of the cards in your archive into your hand, or none of them. It's an all or nothing thing, right? So what that means is, let's say there are five Logos cards. That is the perfect situation. Because... You then basically on your next Logos turn get an extra five cards to play. But let's say it's two Logos, two Shadows, one Untamed. 
What's going to happen is you draw those five cards, but then three of them are clogging up your hand. So at the end of your turn, when you would normally draw until you've got six cards in your hand, you don't. But you might really want to draw more Logos cards. Because you've got Logos creatures on the board, so what you really want to do is keep using those Logos creatures. But now, because your hand is clogged up with non-Logos cards, you have the decision to either use your logo stuff on the board, or play some cards from your hand. You're not doing both. That is why blind archiving can come back to bite you. You have been warned. But let's be clear, right? A lot of the time, what's going to happen is you're going to go, oh, I've got three Shadows cards in my archive. Next Shadows turn, you pick up your archive. You've got an extra three cards to use. You manage to drop your hand down low enough anyway. You avoid any major downsides and you just end up having monster turns. This is good. And then we get to the second part of the card. You discard a card from your archives if you do purge a creature and resolve each of his bonus icons as if you'd played it. Now, a quick addendum to my previous mention i said that if your opponent's got no creatures and you fight or reap you have to purge a creature remember you're only purging a creature if you discarded a card from your archives and you will guarantee five cards in your archive when you play ultra gravitron but outside of that you might not always have cards in your archive so there is absolutely a possibility here that Hey, I can just fight slash reap. It doesn't matter. I don't have to purge my own creatures, even though my opponent's got none on the board. But then, by a similar situation, there are going to be times where you play this, and you get rid of all the cards in your archive, and then you do fight or reap. But actually, it's kind of irrelevant, because you don't get to purge one of your opponent's creatures because there are no cards in your archive to discard. So clearly here, this is a card which is going to work best in a deck that has other archiving. So like a card like Eddie, alright, it's not maybe a perfect fit here. But when you play Eddie, you archive a card. Now, of course, the other thing to think about here, what happens if you want to pick up your archive? Because if you want to pick up your archive, then you have no cards in your archive. So now you can't be purging creatures. So now there's an extra decision to be made here. Because if you pick up your archive, you will have a card advantage. But then all of a sudden, there's nothing to discard to allow you to purge a creature. And this is what I really love about Ultra Gravitron here. You are being forced into making a lot of decisions. And to be clear, right, I love this. My favorite thing about Keyforge, the reason I think it's probably the most mechanically sound game I play, is because the minute-to-minute -minute decision making in Keyforge is unlike any other card game I've come across. And Ultra Gravitron here just fits into this perfectly. I love it. Now, let's go to the best case scenario. Eh, I've archived a bunch of cards, I don't really care. And essentially, you're a 10 power free armor creature. You are very difficult to take down. And what you end up doing is basically sitting there, turn after turn, purging your opponent's creatures. Remember, they don't come back when they're purged. And with a 10 power free armor creature, incidentally, this is why it has to be the weakest of the massive creatures, because otherwise it would be like full on proper job beyond broken. You're just sitting there purging creatures turn after turn after turn. To the point, I think you're only picking up your archive if you absolutely have to. Of course, what you really want to do is start combining this with cards like Lab Work. Any card, basically, where you get to archive more cards is going to be wonderful here. Because I, I don't see Ultra Graviton as a creature whereby, oh, I put five cards in my archive. Oh, I draw five more cards. Yay, card advantage. That's not how I see this creature. I see this creature as a, look, I'm going to pile a bunch of cards in my archive. And then I'm going to sit here and purge all of your creatures and force you to go hard after this. Because if you don't, you are going to lose the game because you are just not going to have any creatures. And the really messed up thing is here, the longer this goes, the better it gets. 
the more creatures you purge, the less likely it is your opponent is going to have a creature that can take down Ultra Gravitron. Honestly, for me, resolving the bonus icons is a secondary consideration. And look, if I can do this while getting free Amber, yay! Or drawing cards or dealing damage or whatever, I don't really care. That's not what excites me about Ultra Gravitron. It is I am board wiping while purging, and that is ridiculous. When I compare it to the other two massive creatures, I mean, Deosilus, for me, I adore it. It's got 20 power. When you play it, you deal 5 damage to an enemy creature and capture all of their amber. And every time you fight or reap, you move an amber to the common supply, i.e. you've captured it, but now they don't get it back. While dealing 2 damage to an enemy creature, I think Deosilus is phenomenal. I think Ultra Gravitron is better. Similarly, Niffle Kong is a 12 power, 2 armor creature. And when you play, you search your deck and discard pile for any number of Niffle creatures and put them into your hand. And when you fight or reap, you may destroy a friendly Niffle creature. And then you deal 3 damage to a creature, steal an amber, and discard an enemy artifact. Again, I think this is a really good card. But if you're asking me to rank them 1 to 3, Ultra Gravitron's coming out as number 1. And I don't think this is some big clickbaity thing, and I don't think I'm trying to trick you here. I believe that this is the best of the gigantic creatures so far, and hopefully I have convinced you of that very same fact. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about it. I am over the top in love with it. Am I being a little bit too enthusiastic? Do you like it less than I do, or do you think this is awesome? like I do. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, me nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk Keyforge and a whole bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.